Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to discuss about some of the scenario based uh, uh, interview questions that can come up in uh, MPLS Layer 3 VPN. So, in the first part, we saw one uh, the first scenario about uh, something related to BGP and also PHP. Uh, in the second part, we discuss about some of the theoretical questions, like uh, I come up with some 16 uh, interview questions that are related to uh, MPLS Layer 3 VPN. Uh, in the part 3, I have the second scenario, a setup like this. Um, let's say we have a, a CE router that is uh, connected to P2, P1 and P and P2 to CE2. Between the CE, PE, uh, we, let's say we have a EBGP, P1, C1, we have a EBGP. In the CE2, I have VRF uh, A routes, let's say. Uh, 10.2.00 then a default route then 192.0.0 so the C2 advertises these prefixes to P1 sorry P2 then it goes to P1 and P1 advertises this to C1 so in C1 in the show IP route I can see all the three routes but the C1 is connected to R1 uh, R1 uh, between the C1 and R1 local router it is uh, having only the 10.2.2.0 slash 24 and 1.1.68.1.0 slash 24 so basically in R1 I don't see the the default route entry uh, in this router so the question is uh, why this R1 is not receiving the default route so basically if you uh, C C2 is advertising it and I can see that uh, P1 receives that and C1 uh, receives and then uh, in R1 I don't see that. So basically in this type of question uh, the person taking interview is trying to uh, check you know uh, when a route is missing that is advertised from one C to another C what are the checkpoints that you will do and uh, ultimately you have to answer why it is not coming in R1. So first of all, uh, the checkpoints is like in the CE2 show IP route, I should see that route and uh, in the PE2 under the VRF, uh, we should be able to see uh, that route is received from CE2 to PE2 and we also have to confirm uh, show IP BGP neighbor advertising uh, and then PE1 loopback IP if you give, we can see PE2 what are the routes that are advertising PE2 to PE1 for that VRF and again on the PE1 show IP BGP neighbor and the received routes we should see these prefixes under the received routes so in this scenario in the PE1 also it received and uh, that is the reason why you are able to see in CE1 so PE1 to CE1 we are receiving it um, the point uh, here to check is that CE1 to R1 we are running OSPF. So we have to check whether C1 is uh, redistributing the BGP to OSPF properly. So as long as the configuration is correct, uh, R1 should receive that. In this case, let's say C1, uh, the redistribution is also configured perfectly, but still we don't see the uh, roots in the R1. So this is the question. And uh, you guys just think about that. I will go to the next scenario so this is scenario number three in a mpls lay 3 vpn i have seen mostly this question pops up uh, whenever the interview happening for a lay 3 vpn that is the c1 p1 c2 p2 they are running ebgp the pc protocol is ebgp c1 having the as number 65001 and c2 is also having the the as number 65001 so now the complete uh, MPLS cloud uh, that is both the PE1 and PE2 using the AS number uh, let's say 9846. So now the question is basically when you initiate a ping from CE1 to CE2 will it work? Right. So we saw in scenario 2 the question is like why the default route is not coming up in uh, R1. 
okay so let's go to the answer for uh, scenario number 2 so the scenario uh, which is uh, shown here from remote c to local c we receive the bgp allocated route including the default route but when we redistribute them to bgp sorry ospf neighbor all route goes except the default route basically it's an expected because we cannot redistribute the default route into ospf if you want to redistribute default route into ospf we need to use the command called default information originate this is the keyword we use in order to allocate a default route into a ospf uh, domain because uh, i mean it is uh, designed in that way because we know that stub and totally stub already allocates default route as a type 3 lsa hence by default ospf won't redistribute the default routes so the answer is basically lies the problem between the ce1 and r1 because uh, ce1 allocates the routes but uh, the default route alone not going into ospf because we need that uh, default information originate command in order to redistribute uh, default route into an ospf so basically that is the answer for this question but um, but i mean as a person um, taking interview they might expect you to check whether you know how to verify the routes received on a sent from a ce received on one pe sent to remote pe and uh, how you verify that the remote c also received that the checkpoints basically now for the second question the same scenario basically um can c1 ping the ce2 it would to work because i'll show in the topology itself both the c routers having the same as number so basically the as path loop avoidance mechanism will not allow like when a route coming from c1 to c2 and c2 receives that route with a as path of its own as number it's going to drop that packet right so it won't work because both the c routers are the same as so by default as path loop avoidance mechanism will silently drop the packets you won't see any kind of log message also unless until you enable uh, bgp debug you won't see the packets that are getting dropped by as path loop uh, prevention mechanism actually so if you need a solution with this kind of a setup like uh, where all the c routers going to use the same as number but still we need to uh, you know uh, forward the packet without any uh, issues we have to use the keyword called uh, as override in the pe routers like under the pe routers under that particular vrf uh, for that neighbor uh, let's say if the neighbor is 1.1.1 you have to give remote as to the c routers as number and activate and then as override command so what will happen when you configure this as override command is uh, the pe router does a check that it will look out a bgp as path attribute and if it finds an as number which is same as the one configured with remote as let's say uh, 2 in this scenario in this uh, configuration example basically then this as override command basically replaces that as number with its own as number so that the receiving ce router will not drop that packet so in this topology i use a 65501 a private as number basically if the packet goes to pe2 and in the pe2 i have that as override command uh, uh, towards the ce2's uh, neighbor what it will do is it will replace us uh, 65001 with uh, 9846 and it will send it to ce2 so ce2 uh, in this case will not drop the packet so this is basically the uh answer for it uh sometime the person taking interview can ask you the question like other than as uh, override is there any other way you can uh, avoid this uh, issue so in bgp it is possible uh, there is a command called uh, allow scene command and uh, in this scenario you can just give allow scene space 1 it will allow to repeat uh, as number more than once um in the as path attribute it won't drop the packet so the two methods but if in a service port environment you will mostly see uh, the as override command used so basically the question uh, here is whether the ping between c1 c2 will work with by default it won't work that is the answer and why it won't work is because of the as uh, path uh, loop prevention mechanism it will simply drop the packet so that is the answer for this question and also 
um, you have to tell uh, in what way we can avoid this. Uh, AS override is a commonly used method and you can also use allocin command uh, that will also avoid uh, you know having problem uh, in these scenarios. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you like this video and also share with your friends and anyone preparing for the interviews. Thank you.